she should be here by now. So let's get started. Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry, Monsieur le Président, I, I was thinking. Do you understand the indictment? Sorry. But I have to ask the prosecutor to repeat. Monsieur Eaton, do you consider it to be a joke? You're charged with a serious crime. Please stay focused. Monsieur Prosecutor, please continue. As I said, I accuse Alfred Eaton of murdering Marie Capet on the 17th of October 1894 in Paris. That day, Alfred Eaton was at the theatrical premiere of Prométhée, Vol du Feu, which took place at Opéra Garnier. As it is apparent from the testimony of witnesses, the accused left at about 8.30 p.m., before the end of the banquet. At about 9.25 p.m., he rented a room in his name at the Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room uh, that approximately at 11.16 p.m. Marie Capet was murdered. Next, uh, the accused returned to his house and at about 10.05 p.m. he entered his apartment in the company of Marie Capet or let her in. It results from the fingerprint analysis it did not show the victim's fingerprints on the outer side of the door, only on the inner. Alfred Eaton, by means of deception or threats, led the victim to his secret workshop, which is located on the first floor of his apartment. The police report did not indicate any signs of struggle or resistance. The accused probably wanted to test on Marie Capet the prototype of a torture machine of his construction, which was in the room along with medical tools and manuals of torture. When Marie Capet realized what the accused intended to do, she grabbed a metal rod lying in the room and hit the accused on the head which caused a real threat to his life and, according to doctors, may have caused unconsciousness. The fingerprints of Marie Capet's left hand were found on the rod, as well as Alfred Eaton's traces of blood. Traces of blood were also found on the floor of that room. At the time of his arrest, the accused had an extensive wound on his head, as confirmed by medical examination. 
Seizing the opportunity, Mary Cappy fled from the apartment. She was stressed and in a hurry. This was confirmed by her numerous fingerprints secured on the inside of the door of the apartment of the accused. Then, Marie Capé ran into a nearby hotel, the Caucasus. It was the same hotel in which the accused rented a room. As it appears from the testimony of the clerk, Marie Capé was extremely stressed, repeating the word doctor and police. Probably she wanted to call for help. When the clerk went to get some water to calm Marie Capé, she disappeared. The next day, on the 18th of October, about 8.32 a.m., a maid found her body in a room rented by Alfred Eaton. It was covered with numerous fingerprints of the victim and of the accused, and had traces of the victim's blood. The immediate cause of death was a severe blow to the abdomen in the liver area, with a blade of about 14 centimetres length. The murder weapon constructed by the accused was secured in his apartment. Marie Capé's unwashed blood stains were still present on it, as well as the fingerprints of the accused. The accused is also charged by the testimony of one of the neighbours, who passed the accused at the front door of the building in which they both lived at about 11.30 p.m. The witness testified that the clothing of the accused was stained with blood. Unfortunately, the said clothes were not found. At the time of committing the alleged crime, the accused was sane, which means he acted consciously. For committed crimes, the accused shall be liable to life imprisonment or the death penalty. Has the accused finally understood the indictment? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused plead guilty to the charges against him? Non, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused want to provide explanations? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Monsieur le Président, could I ask you for some conversation time with my client? Of course. I just wish it would not take too much time. We've already wasted too much of it. Monsieur Eaton, please note that you can look through evidence at any moment. I will show the defense evidence to the court at the time of your uncovering during the testimony. It might surprise the prosecutor. If necessary, you can recall the string of events, according to the prosecution. Will you need my help during testimony? I will give you my advice and remind you of important facts and events. We are ready, uh, Monsieur le Président. Then let's get started. Monsieur Eaton. What were you doing on October 17, 1894, from 8 to 12 p.m.? There was a theatrical premiere of Prométhée that day, which was sponsored by Le Feu, in which I am the lead designer. Starting at 7 p.m., I was at the premiere at the Opéra Garnier. Around 8.30 p.m., after the play, I found that I did not want to attend the dull banquet, and instead I preferred to work. I said goodbye to Hugo Argent, uh, President of Le Feu, and I drove home. I got there at about 9 p.m. the car. For a moment, I admired the charms of Montmartre. I 
do not recall that part. I decided to go for an evening walk. I read the restaurant's menu. I entered the Café de Paris Cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. They beat me and threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Did you report this fact to police officers? No, Monsieur le Président. I decided that it was not worth losing my time. And why is that? A second of my worth is more important than the lifetime of each and every one of those plebeians. Besides, if I had reported it, I would have done them a favor. What do you mean, Monsieur Eaton? In jail, they would have had better living conditions than those halls that they call houses. I understand. Please return to your testimony. I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. I read cultural announcements. I looked at slogans inciting to the new revolution written on the walls by the rabble. I opened the gate. I entered the nearby hotel, Caucasus. I opened the door to the phone room. I opened the door to the phone room. I looked through an advertisement of a company offering blimp tours over Paris. I bought a few things from my vending machine. I spent a few minutes talking on the phone. I looked through the inner window into the phone room. I threw a coin into the fountain of the hotel lobby. I spent a few minutes talking on the phone.
Apparently, the clerk noticed my state, but the rules of savoir vivre did not let him make any commentary. I wanted to rent a room in a hotel, but the clerk said that a room had already been rented in my name. He said it's on the top floor and gave me a spare key. Monsieur Eaton, do you claim that you did not rent that room? Oui, Monsieur le Président, but I knew it could not be a coincidence. The name Ethan is not that common. So you tried to learn more from the clerk? Yes, however, he hid behind his professional secrecy. I knew he wouldn't tell me a thing. I do not understand one more thing. You live next to the hotel, so why did you want to rent a room there? Sometimes I meet up with some girls of Moulin Rouge, and due to my reputation, I prefer not to do it in my apartment. Did you meet Marie Capet face to face? No, Monsieur le Président, never. I understand. Please continue. Then I called the elevator. I opened the elevator grate. I took the elevator to the second. I entered the room. I read cultural announcements. out into the corridor. I opened the door and entered the room. Off the blood. I went out into the corridor. Then I opened the door. Then I opened the door. Then I read cultural announcements. I opened the elevator grate. Later, 
I took the elevator to the ground. Then, I opened the elevator grate. I wanted to check the guest book, but I couldn't do that with the clerk nearby. I opened the door and walked out into the street. Then I opened the gate. For a moment, I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. I do not know that. the charming streets of Montmartre. I opened the door and entered the building where my apartment is. I noticed that my neighbors still cluttered the hallway with his old bicycle. There was a letter for me from the Ministère de la Justice. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidenced mark with number two. It clearly shows that my client designed his interrogation machine with only the best intentions. According to his plan, it was supposed to be forwarded to the prosecutor's office and law enforcement agencies to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. The prosecutor's suggestions that my client has supposedly <laughs> intended to use this device to torture helpless women is hasty and completely... Monsieur le Président, this is the evidenced mark with number two. It clearly shows that my client designed his interrogation machine with only the best intentions. According to his plan, it was supposed to be forwarded to the prosecutor's office and law enforcement agencies to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. The prosecutor's suggestions that my client has supposedly <laughs> intended to use this device to torture helpless women is hasty and completely untrue. This letter only proves that the accused was looking for application of his torture machine and had not found any support from Minister de la Justice, so he decided to test it on an innocent woman. The court supports the view that the mere fact of an offer to the Minister de la Justice does not constitute sufficient evidence that the allegedly accused acted in good faith when creating such a device. Monsieur Eaton, please go back to your testimony. elevator grate. Then I took the elevator to the second floor. Then 
I opened the elevator grate. Then, I opened the door to my apartment and entered. I put my groceries into the... I checked the vegetable box to see if anything needed to be bought. I ate the leftovers from my lunch and drank some wine. I was cooking dinner for the next day. the piano key. I cannot play, but I bought the piano to fit the interior decoration. I opened the inner door. Then I opened the door. For a moment, I admired the new sculptures that I had recently ordered. For a moment, I admired the new sculptures that I had recently ordered. For a moment, I admired the new sculptures that I had recently ordered. I opened the door and walked out into the stairwell. I knocked, but no one answered. Then I opened the elevator grid. I took the elevator to the ground floor. The elevator grid. Then I opened the door. I noticed some muck on the floor of the corridor, and I silently cursed the rabble with which I have to share my building. Do you usually have a similar attitude to other people? Do you believe you are better than others? If others treat me like trash just because of my gypsy origin, I do not intend to remain silent. Do you often meet with racist-based reluctance towards you? Too often. Especially since I've become famous. In the eyes of all these fallen lords, I'm a nouveau riche. The poor think I'm a gypsy fraud and a thief. Did you feel hatred towards those people? I did. However, I certainly wouldn't kill anyone. 
They were not worth it. Please return to your testimony. You noticed some garbage. And what happened next? Then, I opened the door and stepped outside. I entered the Café de Paris Cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. They beat me and threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Monsieur Eaton, why did you walk into the same café where you had previously been attacked? I was hoping that this, or a similar rabble, wouldn't be there anymore, and I would be able to drink wine peacefully. I knocked, but no one answered. I opened the door and walked into the Caucasus Hotel. I've just received an urgent package from the Procureur de la République, containing new evidence in the case. I ask both the parties to get acquainted with it. It is a letter from the attorney's office from one week before the murder, which calls Alfred Eaton in attendance to forward the designs of the invention which he has constructed in secret from Le Feu Company. The firm acted on behalf of the president of the company, Hugo Argent. Monsieur Eaton, have you received the letter? Oui, Monsieur le Président. When did you receive it? I, I don't remember exactly, but probably on the 10th of October. So, exactly one week before the murder? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Which designs are mentioned in this letter? designs of my secret invention on which I was working in my free time. It has no connection with Le Feu. Therefore, why did the firm send you this letter on behalf of Hugo Argent? Hugo must have guessed what great potential my invention had and how profitable it could be. Did you keep your designs in your apartment? Uh, oui, Monsieur le Président, in the safe in my secret workshop. Due to the new circumstances which may be relevant to the case, I order a rehearing of Hugo Argent. Please summon the witness. And at this time, I announce a break. The next court session will be held tomorrow at the same time. Your father and I are quite sure that you did not do it. You couldn't have. 
We love you and we are waiting for you at home. Please leave this cursed Paris and return to your home parts. Mama et Papa. P.S. Papa asks you not to mention the hotel guest book. Apparently you know what that means. I am in a deep regret that you had to stand before the court accused of such a terrible deed. I assure you that I deeply believe in your innocence and will do my best so that you can continue to work for the glory of Le Feu and toute la France. Cordialement, Hugo Argent. sure that you will take responsibility for what you have done to our daughter. You will be beheaded, and even neither your millions nor your connections will be able to help you. Is the stolen money not enough? Is your wrongdoing to all these poor people not enough? You had to tear everything away from us, including our only daughter. Death to the rich. Vive la nouvelle révolution. <laughs>